One thing's clear, life is not always easy. It can be filled with some very tough challenges. For example, the death of a loved one, divorce and disappointment on your job. It can also lead to you giving up on your dream. But Hollywood's top motivational, inspirational speaker says, don't give up on yourself. The great music producer Quincy Jones says, Tim's story is the voice of encouragement of our generation. And he's the focus of today's Beyond the Dream. We started off Linwood, California. Seven people in a two-bedroom house. Wow. <laughs> That's called crowded. And we used to have a Volkswagen bug with seven people. That's called illegal. <laughs> so we were driving around illegally dreaming big dreams. And those big dreams from those humble beginnings planted the seeds of greatness in Tim's story. His childhood was filled with love, laughter, and big doses of encouragement from his parents. Even through the sting of heartbreak, his father dying when Tim was just 10. You know, the, the Bible says when a person is disappointed, it can make you heart sick. Through all of the heartbreak as a child, Tim never lost faith in God. It served as a calling upon his life to be a mender of broken hearts, an encourager for those with broken dreams and shattered lives. My heart is truly to see other people's visions come to pass. Tim is a man on a mission to help people overcome setbacks, devastating bad breaks, and fulfill their dreams. In his book, Come Back and Beyond, How to Turn Your Setback into Your Comeback, Tim lays out a blueprint that can help anyone, particularly the millennial generation. I've seen a lot of young people going back to the original vision of family, character, strength, building the right foundation. And not to put their families down or their parents down, but just to learn from our failures. When he isn't speaking or writing, Tim enjoys walking through the park, enjoying nature. He has earned his American dream, becoming one of the top life coaches and pastors in the world. He has delivered his life-affirming message to millions of people in 70 foreign countries. Wherever he goes, he delivers an inspiring message to people in need of encouragement. If we just criticize, what we are doing is what we are paralyzing people in their position. I stir people up. I look to what is on the inside of a person and I reach in and I pull it out. Whether it's a young kid in Soweto, where I'm telling them the dreams come true. So to God, the creator, you are beautiful. Tim's message of hope increased in popularity when he launched the Hollywood Bible Study in 1992. Since then, many stars like Smokey Robinson, Kanye West, Quincy Jones, Robert Downey Jr., and more have come to appreciate his inspiring message. Hollywood started listening to me in the early 90s because they saw that I cared. If I would sit down and chat with a Walter Matthau or a Charlton Heston or the great Vidal Sassoon, Lee Iacocca, the older group in Hollywood said, this guy really cares. And then it went on to young Hollywood and helping out a lot of people that are troubled in Hollywood. Life is living. There's a scripture in the Bible that says to walk worthy of the calling that you've received and to live your life worthy of that calling. He also created the Tim Story Dream Academy to provide helpful tools on how to navigate through life's challenges to achieve one's dreams. It's about holding your hand and helping your dreams come true. That's what your show is all about, helping people to go beyond the dream and knowing that all things are still possible. Indeed they are. Tim Story, thank you so much. Really like that guy. Come on and clap your hands. What an awesome God. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. All right. The home of Chico's Tacos. Fred Lawyer Insurance. Come on, somebody. Dick Poe. And the little Chihuahuas. Raise your right hand. Father, we thank you for our awesome life. No matter what we're going through, somehow, some way, you're going to make a way where there was no way. This is a supernatural Sunday. You will help us take back what the enemy took from us and even what we gave away. Thank you for our awesome church. And everybody said, 
Amen. Shake hands with two people, tell them how great they look, and then you may be seated. Wasn't that awesome seeing our church on Fox News? I we made it. The pastor of this church is one of the best teachers in the body of Christ throughout the world, and some say the best. Give our pastor, Charles Neiman, a big clap. Fantastic. Fantastic. Give Pastor Jared a big clap. Fantastic. And what Shannon is doing with the women, Pastor Shannon, can we give her a big clap? And all the staff. In 1989, I did a conference that was hosted by our good friend, Tommy Barnett. It came out of my spirit. A friend of mine helped me to get it out there. We brought uh, Benny Hinn at that time, a guy named Larry Lee. We brought also Carmen. Does anybody remember Carmen, the singer? Ah, so fancy. We had Carmen. He was there. Reinhard Bonnke was there. And Ray McCauley came. And that's when we connected is in 1989. And when I felt the spirit of Ray McCauley, I had never sensed anything like it. He is apostolic. It's a word we don't use very much in today's Christianity. But he is a leader of leaders. He is an apostle. And so when he brought me to his church in 1990, and then I began to meet people like Charles Neiman and also Brian Houston and Casey Treat, he was the one that was so pivotal in bringing us all together, one of the most powerful men in the body of Christ in the last 100 years. Give Ray McCauley a big clap. And his wife, Zelda. Give Zelda a clap. Fantastic. And Haley is amazing. Turn with me in your Bibles, please, to the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 12. We welcome all of you that are watching online. This service will be amazing. This will be one of the best services I've ever had with you. Watch what's about to hit this place. Proverbs 13, 12 says... Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Pastor Ray and I have worked together for all these years. I'm going to pick up from where he was. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. In the Message Bible, it says this, unrelenting disappointment. Say unrelenting. The word unrelenting, look at me, means something keeps coming. Look at me. Something keeps coming. You can handle problems if they came like every once in a while. You had a problem, watch, and then one came in three years. How many can handle that kind of problem? But many times, problems are unrelenting. They come, and they come, and they come. It reminds me of when I was a 12-year-old, and I went to Hawaii with my sister Paige, she's older than me, she was modeling at the time, and I went to Hawaii and I was body surfing at a place called Sandy Beach in Hawaii. A lot of you military guys, you know of Sandy Beach, and in Sandy Beach the waves can come so fast and hard and bam, but at that time I was not studying the internet or Wikipedia, so I did not know that Sandy Beach had tough waves. So I'm 12 years of age, I'm out there body surfing, watch this, and a big wave came, bam, and hit me. I got back up, a wave came, bam, and hit me. Big wave came, bam, hit me. Another wave hit me, bam, hit me right in the swimsuit and knocked my chonies straight off. <laughs> so now I had a problem because my swimsuit was floating. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and sometimes, somehow, I was going to have to get back to shore, but my chonies were floating. Come on, somebody. And waves kept coming. Look, waves kept coming. Waves kept coming. And isn't life like that? Problems can hit, come on, knock your chonies straight off, and still they keep coming. Finally, I got them, and here I am dressed today. Thank the Lord. Awesome. <laughs> unrelenting disappointment. Somebody say unrelenting. Can make the heart sick. 
So let me break down the word sick. The word sick means ill. It can make the heart faded. It could make the heart despondent. Watch. When you're a kid, you're thinking big. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, speaking for my friend Bob Rogers. And while I was there, I asked to speak to the kids because I love to speak to young people. And I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? One kid said, LeBron James, another little kid, the president, a little girl, a princess. <laughs> Not one said anything negative. Because when you're little, it's like that song by the Black Eyed Peas. I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee. When you're little, you have an I'm a bee spirit. You could take any little kid today that's four years of age to a Toys R Us. They think they can afford anything in there. Come on, people. That's why when you don't buy them what they see, they go crazy. They're like, what? Buy it for me. You're rich. You have a car. Say this, say, unrelenting disappointment can make you heart sick. So here's what happens in life. You start with momentum. The word momentum means a force. Watch me. You started with a force. You started with a force. But then disappointment comes. Setbacks. Challenges. The Bible says it can make you heart sick. Why is it? important to understand the heart because faith comes from the heart joy comes from the heart. that's why some of you aren't happy because your heart sick you're sick in the center peace comes from the heart and even dreaming comes from the heart so many people they settle because their heart sick so unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick but how many of you know we're not going to stay there? The second part says, but, say but, a sudden good break will turn your life around. Somebody, your life will be turned around by the end of this year. You better clap your hands and shout. Come on, El Paso. Shout like God's big enough to do it. A sudden, a sudden good break. The word sudden, the sudden means quickly, out of nowhere. See, we're used to suddenly bad things happen. But what if suddenly good things happen? God's about to hit you with a cluster of suddenlies. Why do you say a cluster? Because some of you have been taught wrong. You, you think that miracles come every once in a while. That's unscriptural. I like what Or Roberts used to say. Miracles are either coming or going at all times. I believe your next miracle's in motion. I believe your son's about to be okay. I believe your daughter's about to be okay. I believe that someone's about to get out of debt. I believe that someone's about to get healed in about 22 minutes. Somebody clap your hands and shout like he's a miracle working God. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick, but, but, but a sudden, sudden, out of nowhere, watch me, out of nowhere, you're going to get healed today. Out of nowhere, a new door is going to open. A divine door is going to open. But a sudden, a sudden good, a sudden good, you don't need a break. You need a good break. A break will get you this far. Watch. You need a a good, a good break is a God break. The Bible says in Genesis 131, and God saw all that he made, and it was very good. See, when my father was in trouble, and he struggled with alcoholism, and he struggled with rage, and we were po, we didn't just need a break. We needed a God kind of break. You're about to get a God break, a God standard 
break. And God saw what he made. He said, it's up to my standard. It's up to my liking. You're about to raise up and go to another standard, the standard that God saw you living when he created you, even while you were in your mother's womb. Somebody clap your hands and shout like you're about to get it. Come on, people. Come on, people. You're about to get a God kind of break. Say, a sudden good break. Well, what does break mean? Break means opportunity. You are one opportunity away from something gigantic. I was at a church in Florida, and a lady came up, and she prophesied to me. And she says, it's going to be Oprah. I said, I have no idea what you're saying. She says, it's going to be Oprah. Oprah's going to open her world to you. That was exactly 12 months ago. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Oprah said, I don't know why, Tim, but I just like you so much. I'm going to open my world. It's not by accident. The miracle was already in motion, and God was already speaking it to people. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Your breakthrough is already in the spirit world. God is opening doors for you in September, October, November, December. Clap your hands in El Paso, Texas, a sudden good break. He says, Isaiah 46, verse 9, let me quote. He says, I know what is yet to come in your life. For I know, look at me, what is yet to unfold. For I know the end from the beginning. People, listen. It's a setup. It's a setup. Charles Neiman was being set up to be Charles Neiman, come on, years ago. It's a setup. Come on, somebody. Ray McCauley was being set up to be Ray McCauley years ago. It's a, it's a, it's a setup. It's, it's spoken. You've been spoken of. You've been spoken over. I knew I was different. Even though we were poor, I knew I was different. I knew I was rich. Even though we were poor, I knew I was rich. Hey. I had, I had swag even when we were poor. And then my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Probert, he confirmed it. He says, Timmy Story, can you stay after class? And one of the kids says, oh, he's going to get you because you're always cracking jokes. Mr. Probert says, I just want to talk to you a little bit, Timmy. I said, good to see you, Mr. Probert. He goes, I want to tell you something about yourself. I said, okay. He says, you are, I didn't know what was going to come next. He says, you are brilliant. No, 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 that's what he said. And I bought into what he said. Shh, I bought into what he said. See, some of you do not buy into what God says. A sudden God kind of break. It's about to hit your family. No, no, no. It's not going to just barely get one of them saved. I, I hope he shows up for Thanksgiving at least. <laughs> A sudden God kind of break, opportunity, will turn, turn, turn there. In the Hebrew means it will reposition you. Do you understand that we are being repositioned? Do you understand that we're the head and not the tail? That we're above and not beneath? That we're not going under? We're not a bunch of po people. We're not going to be a bunch of addicted people. We're not going to be a lot of challenged people. Give the Lord a clap and a shout like we're turning the tide. Somebody shout. Do you understand what I'm saying? I saw it in Ulf Ekman in Sweden in the 80s. That was the first time I saw it is 1986. I saw a takeover spirit. We saw it in Yungi Cho in the early 80s. There was a takeover spirit. Then I saw it at Ray McCauley's like I'd never seen in my life. You had the top of this. You had the top of that. The top of government. The top of, uh, 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 of, uh, of fashion. You had the top. That same spirit is in El Paso, Texas under the leadership of Pastor Charles Neiman. We are taking 
over. Clap your hands like we're taking over. <laughs> Say a sudden. Say sudden. Sudden. Good break. Well, that's not going to help you if you're feeling sorry for yourself. I can't believe what happened when Louis left me. That was 17 years ago. He's a fool. He's a fool. He's a fool. And you're still talking about the fool 17 years. Chavela. Da, 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 da. That was 17 years ago. Does anybody have that kind of tia that just complains all the time over what happened so long ago? Back in 68, we're still talking about what happened in 68. I used to walk nine miles in the snow in El Paso all the time, uphill. I don't, I don't see those kind of hills right now. Okay, Tim Story, I'm kind of listening to you right now. I'm kind of listening to you. But when is this break gonna happen? Really? Are you that impatient? Are you that impatient? So powerful. See, you have to be in the position for a break. And then you have to have the posture for the break. Over 170 times in the Bible it says, hearken, hearken, hearken. That means put your head up. Look at me. Put your head up. See, some of you, you get on my last nerve because you're like this. I... <laughs> Put your head up. Amen. Put your head up. No matter what. Come on, clap. Come on, El Paso. Come on. Put your... Come on, give me a high five. Put your head up. Put your head up. Do you know, do you know, do you know what I like about people? You know what I like about people like us? Look at all the hell we've been through. And you're still in church on a Sunday morning saying that God is able. Come on and stir me up. Hearken, 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 hearken. Put your head up. That's what some of you single mothers do. You put your head up. I bet there's times you don't want to wake up, but you got a kid, right? Or you got two kids. You got to get up. I, 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 you got to get up. I, 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 I got to get some cereal. Got to put my mascara on on the car. Come on, somebody. I'm hearkening. Come on. I'm going to the healing service. I am hearkening. Come on, somebody. Who cares if you went on Christian Mingo? At least you're trying. At least you're trying me, huh? You're trying. You still got it. <laughs> Selfie. <laughs> Instagram. Pew, get it out there. I know we love to feel sorry for ourselves. I feel that off some of you. I can feel that. You instantly go to, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. That's a life in the pit of hell. Every one of us has always felt, at, at, at least one time in our lives, no one's been through it like us. Come on. Whew. You got to be in the right position. Say position. Posture. Say posture. Watch this. And then you got to, you got to be patient. We've been talking Pastor Charles, Pastor Ray McCauley, they've helped me for years ago. They've been saying, you're going to hit it big in entertainment. You're going to hit it big in there. And sure, we have all the Hollywood Bible study. Sure, I help all these stars and stars I don't even mention now that would blow you away. But there was a break that was about to hit me. But these guys would stick with me and go, Tim, it's going to hit. It's going to hit. And guess what? Be steadfast, unmovable, 
and always abounding. Look at everything the enemy threw at you, and you're still standing. You're still. Come on and clap your hands like you're still standing. Can I have my piano player? Come on, somebody clap your hands like you're still standing. You're still standing. You have to be in the right position, say position. You have to be in the right posture, say posture. Look at me, what are you trying to get me to do? I'm trying to get you to look up. I want you to look up. You're playing behind me. I want you to look up. And you say, well, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. When my brother died, struggling with alcohol, he got his life together, then he died on us. I spoke at Billy Joe Doherty's two days later at the word explosion and never said one thing. I never complained to any of my friends. Because I was built for this. I was built for this. See, God always delivers his deliverers. I've been delivered. Shh. Look at me. That's why I give a rip. Some people don't. I care. My friends are afraid to go to 7-Eleven with me because they know it's going to take 45 minutes. Because <laughs> I'm going to help all the guys out there that are begging. That's somebody's kid. But some of you in the past feeling sorry for yourself Nursing it, cursing it, and rehearsing it. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn your whole life, can turn your children around, can turn your children's children around. You know what we're doing in this big old facility? We're turning three generations around. Why don't you clap for him like he's awesome? Now stand up in this place and clap for him like he's awesome.